Welcome to the fifth annual Women Leaders in Global Health Conference. Well, we're here today to shake up the idea of leadership. And it's a conversation that has long been overdue. The need to be more inclusive, to listen more, to uh, problem solve together, to be transparent, to be accountable. To me, those terms are actually the definition of feminist leadership. Amidst all this darkness that we faced is that we saw frontliners rise to the occasion. Um, we saw healthcare workers and advocates and activists working tirelessly to bring these essential services to communities and to the poor. But I think when you talk about leadership, I think women make very good leaders because they're very fair, equitable and empathetic. And I think that's what today's uh, you know, world wants in terms of leadership. I think the way that we start to reimagine leadership um, in women's health is that I think we need to start thinking about that if the systems that we're working within are not allowing us to really affect change that is positively impacting women's health, then it's time for us to start thinking about moving outside these systems. Remember, women do hold up half the sky. It's really high time that leaders ensure that they get paid as well as their male colleagues do. When we are conscious and like very intentional about acknowledging and centering people who exist at like intersections of multiple mar marginalizations, we are at like risk of sort of creating microcosms of the global power structure. A bird cannot fly with one wing. We need both wings. And we need initially quotas because this will be the support, the prop that women need, eventually going on to parity. But I think we'll see in the course of the debate that's still a while yet. And how do we start to really reframe the system levels of philanthropy to think about and actually design things to be intersectional and feminist by design? When men are insecure, that's when they become an obstacle to others. And often, you know, women bear the brunt of that, you know, being like a wall. We all know that when women are empowered with decision-making agency and valued as health workers, health professionals, they can improve maternal and child health, reduce malaria's impact on health systems, and lift themselves and their families out of poverty. I uh, hope that you have enjoyed these two days as much as I have enjoyed and not just meeting uh, some extremely extraordinary women leaders in their own professional spaces, but also listening to so many others uh, who spoke, as I said, with unprecedented candor, compassion and courage. Absolutely. I, I, I take it as a, as a compliment when somebody calls me a troublemaker. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad word, it's a good word. Uh, it means I'm doing something. If nobody calls me a troublemaker, then I haven't done my job. What an inspiring, invigorating day. I guess it's easy to see what happens when women come together. You get innovative ideas, lots and lots of inspiration. And sometimes you also get that good old fashioned nudge that you may have been needing all along. It has been such an inspiration to spend the last two days with women leaders male allies, and proud troublemakers from across the globe. Thank you for joining us for our fifth annual Women Leaders in Global Health Conference.